Gary the Gardener by Amos Barr, illustrated by Elhan. This is the front of the book, the spine of the book, and the back of the book. Gary the Gardener. This is the title page, written by Amos Barr, who's the author, illustrated by Elhan, who drew the pictures. One day the teacher said, boys and girls, it's nice to do things for people we love. What would you like to do for someone special? Susan said, I'll buy my mom a present for her birthday. I'll buy my grandma a present, said Jerry. Gary said, I won't buy my mom a present. I'll make her one myself. The teacher said, that's a great idea, Gary. I'm sure your mom will be very happy. That afternoon on the way home, Gary wondered what he could make for his mother. He tried hard to remember what she liked, but he couldn't think of anything. Not one single thing, and soon he was home. Gary lived on the second floor of a small apartment building. Out front, there were flower beds and a lawn. Gary stood in front of the building. He looked at the lawn and at the colorful flowers. I know, he thought suddenly. I'll make a flower bed. Then on Mother's Day, I'll pick a bunch of flowers to give to Mom, and it'll be a secret, my secret surprise for her. That afternoon, Mother gave Gary some money to buy a snack. Gary went with the money to Mr. Marigold's flower shop. Hi, Mr. Marigold, he said. Hi, Gary, said Mr. Marigold. What can I do for you? I want to grow some flowers in the garden, said Gary. He didn't give away the secret. Oh, then you need some flower seeds. What color flowers would you like? Red ones, answered Gary. Red was his mother's favorite color. Okay, let's see, said Mr. Marigold. Why don't you take snapdragon seeds? Snapdragon? What a funny name. Will they snap at me? Mr. Marigold held up a packet of seeds. It had a picture of fine looking red flowers. Each of these, he said, opens and closes like, like a dragon's mouth, cried Gary. Right, said Mr. Marigold, but they don't bite and they don't cost much, about the same as a little snack. Good, said Gary, because that's exactly how much money I've got. On the way home, he was very proud and happy. But back at the garden, he began to worry. How would he make the flower bed? How would he plant the seeds? It was something he had never done before. Gary stood there feeling lost and sad. Suddenly he saw his father coming home from work. He ran up and hugged him. Can you help me grow some flowers in the garden? Sure, that would be fun, said his father. They went into the storage room. Gary's father took tools, a big hoe, a big pail, a big rake, and a big spade for himself and small ones for Gary. They took the tools back to the garden. First, they marked out a flower bed. Then they covered it with rotting leaves to fertilize the soil. Next, they turned over the soil with the spade. The rotting leaves were buried inside. Then they broke up the big clods of soil with their hoes. Then they raked the flower bed and smoothed it over. Next, they made rows with thin sticks spread the seeds inside, and covered them with soil. They pressed down the soil with their hands. Finally, they watered the flower beds with the hose. As soon as they had finished planting, Mother appeared in the garden. What are you doing? She asked. Um, just making a flower bed, said Gary. He was afraid she would discover the secret. Listen, Mom, I'm really hungry. Can we go in for lunch? Sure, said Mother. Come on, both of you and they all went inside. The next morning, Gary ran down to the garden. There were no red flowers there. Gary was disappointed and walked sadly to school. In the afternoon, he ran to his flower bed again. There was still nothing there. Maybe I didn't water them enough, thought Gary. He turned on the hose and watered them some more. The next day, there was still no sign of flowers. Maybe I didn't hoe well enough, thought Gary. He tried to hoe some more but the soil was too wet. Then he tried to rake some more, but stopped. His little rake pulled some seeds out of the soil. Before he put the seeds back in the soil, Gary saw that they were fat and swollen. 
but still there were no flowers. Another day passed, and another, and it was only two days before Mother's Day. That morning, Gary finally saw something in his flower bed, something which made him very happy. Rows and rows of little green shots. This is great, I did it, my seeds sprouted. Soon there will be flowers. Gary went off happily to school. That day, the other children wrapped their presents. Gary played in the schoolyard and thought of his own present. After school, he ran home to pick his flowers. The shots were bigger, but there were still no red flowers in the flower bed. Gary ran to the flower shop. Mr. Marigold, nothing grew. You promised. I paid you. Now I don't have any red flowers for my mom. I didn't know you wanted them for your mother's day, said Mr. Marigold. I would have told you it takes two months for the flowers to grow. Gary started crying. So what can I do? I'm the only one without a present for my mom. Mr. Marigold calmed Gary down. Then he took a big bunch of beautiful red flowers from a vase. Here, take them, he told Gary. When your snapdragons bloom, you can pay me back with flowers. Thanks, said Gary. With all my flower, will, when will all my flowers bloom? If you take good care of them, they should bloom around the middle of July. Good, exclaimed Gary. My mom's birthday is in the middle of July. Gary took the red flowers and left the shop. On the way home, he reminded himself how to look after his flower bed. Give it lots of water if there's no rain. Thin out the shots so that the plants have room to grow. Pull out the weeds, which take food and water from the plants. And in the middle of July, pick the flowers. Give some to mom for her birthday and pay back Mr. Marigold the rest. When mother came home from the store, Gary surprised her with the lovely flowers. I forgot this weekend is Mother's Day. What a wonderful present, Gary. She kissed her son and hugged him. And on her birthday, she was even happier. Gary brought her red snapdragons from his very own garden. From that day on, everybody called him Gary the Gardener.